Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I'm your host here on the show. And if this is your first time to tuning in, I want to give you a very, very special welcome. If you are listening in on iTunes or Google Play, be sure and rate, uh, subscribe for sure. So you don't miss out on future shows, but subscribe, rate, and review. If you're uh, watching on one of our YouTube channels, uh, we love your comments and your questions that you can post below. We'll get all of your questions answered. So if you're brand new to the show, we talk about everything uh, as relates to real estate investing, flipping houses, finding deals, commercial properties, land, self-storage, small apartments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and how to get your deals funded and et cetera. So on today's show, I'm excited to have back some uh, dear friends and very successful students of mine, Dan and Crystal Muhorter, and they're joining me back here on the show. They have quite a story today. They're going to be talking about how they have done a recent deal where they combine two strategies, and that's buying subject to the existing note and combining the private money strategy with that as well. So with that, Dan and Crystal, welcome back to the show. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Thanks for having us. Hello. I'm excited to have you back on. How y'all doing today? Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's see here. Crystal, you were a uh, full-time occupational therapist for, what, 20-some years? Yep. 26 years. And Dan, you were, your full-time career was what up until going full-time real estate investor? I did a little over 21 and a half years in the Navy. And then I was 16 years as a government contractor for the Coast Guard. There you go. And y'all, we started working together um, in my coaching programs and et cetera, about three years ago. And how long were you in uh, my program, Crystal, before you uh, retired from your day job and went full-time real estate investor? Right around nine months. Nice. And yeah. Dan, you were what, about a year and a half? About that, yeah, about that. Perfect. And so since we've started working together, Crystal, how much profit and equity have you all enjoyed? 3.25 million. Nice. Well, you averaged that out over three years, not bad per year, right? That is not bad. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't making that as an occupational therapist. <laughs> <laughs> and then how much private money, Dan, have you all raised since we started working together? What are you sitting at? One point? Five million? Oh, right. 1.5 million. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So uh, let me just tell our audience, give them an invitation, a free invitation. If y'all want to meet Dan and Crystal and myself, we've got an upcoming live event on real estate investing, how we find private money, how we average profits over $60,000 per deal. So you can check out the upcoming live event and all the reasons why you would want to come at www.jayconner.com forward slash live event, all spelled one word. That's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash live event. Well, today, y'all, we're going to talk about this recent deal you've done where you're combining two strategies, buying subject to and using private money and lessons learned from this story. So first of all, let's start with subject to, what in the world does it mean to buy a house subject to the existing note? Well, first of all, you have to have an existing note. That means that the property has to have a mortgage on it. And then you purchase the property subject to, so you're taking the responsibility for paying the existing mortgage. However, the mortgage remains in the seller's name during the time period that you are making those payments for them. And at the same time, the deed transfers. So the deed transfers immediately at the time of your initial closing. And then you make the payments. The mortgage stays in their name until you are able to get it cashed out, whether or not you sell it in the MLS and get it cashed out by a traditional MLS buyer or whether or not you install a tenant buyer and work them through the process until they're mortgage ready. So you're not assuming the note, you're just agreeing to make their payments and the mortgage stays in their name, right? That's correct. 
So in your experience, and I know you and Dan do a ton of these deals, you buy a lot of houses subject to the existing note, who in their right mind would sell you their house and agree to let the mortgage stay in their name and hope you're going to make their payments on time? individuals who are in a situation that has caused them to be highly motivated. So it can be for a number of reasons. It can be someone that's had a life change because they're going through a divorce. And unfortunately at that point, obviously you need to have some level of resolution likely in a lot of those cases, if they are interested in doing a subject to it's because they may be over leveraged. They may not have enough equity in the property to sell with a realtor or in a traditional fashion. We have individuals who are in a high military population and they need to have things move along quickly. And unfortunately, a lot of them end up with properties, either one, they're trying to sell it, they don't have any equity, they're trying to sell it with a realtor, now they're stuck in kind of a, a warp time zone, if you will, waiting for this thing to happen. That means that moving on and transitioning is very challenging. So it may mean that a military spouse has to stay behind, maybe that they can't make any decisions moving forward. So in situations like that, they need a quick solution. So we're able to take care of those things. Individuals who are in any, any level of foreclosure or pre-foreclosure, so they're behind on payments. So it's really anybody has a problem that they need solved and they need it solved quickly and effectively that would be willing to do that. So they could have a personal problem, i.e. health, relationships, lost a job, someone passed away, or there could be a problem with the house or the property itself or both, right? That's correct. Yes. So let's talk about this uh, deal you've done to where you are combining subject to buying it subject to the existing note and using private money. Now, just to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about when we're saying private money, we're not talking about hard money brokers or hard money lenders. This has got nothing to do with the banks. So Dan, take a moment and tell our audience what exactly is private money as we use private money and talk about private money. Oh, certainly. So you have a lot of individuals out there that have investment capital, whether it's cash or it's uh, IRAs, 401ks, et cetera, that are making a very, very small rate of return on them. So what Jay has taught us and what we have really implemented in our business is the ability to reach out to them and identify these individuals and address the fact that we can give a much higher rate of return safely and securely and use it in the real estate market so they can be in real estate without getting their hands dirty, so to speak. We use that capital and we give them a higher rate of return and they either live off it on a monthly payment or they take quarterly payments or annual payments or whatever it may be. But that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah. And at the, at the upcoming live event where you all will be there and myself as well, we dive deep on private money and how we find these private money lenders and where they are, how you contact them, what you say to them. We actually go over our private lending program that we offer to the private lenders. So, for everybody that's remotely interested in learning really how to do this private money thing, just be sure and get on over to the website that I gave out at the beginning of the show and, and get registered and we'll get you all educated on how to use this private money thing. So Crystal, tell us about this deal that you all have recently done. Absolutely. So it was a single family home and the individuals were individuals that had been in the military, that's what brought them to the area. They had equity in the home, but there were some things that were making it a challenge for them to sell it. So it was really putting them in a difficult bind. They really wanted to move. They didn't have the resources to do what was necessary to get that taken care of, as well as move. They were moving long distance, so they're moving out west. And so they had found us on Facebook reached out and said, hey, do you think this is anything that might work, that you might be able to help us? So we went and we took a look at the house and right away, I mean, that's the nice part about, you know, once you're investing for a long period of time, you start to be able to see those key things. So right away, I was able to identify why it wasn't selling and why they weren't in a good position at this point. They were just more aesthetics, but things that we know a traditional MLS buyer is just not going to be able to overlook. So we had our conversation, we talked about their timing 
and ultimately discovered that they had an existing mortgage on the property that was around 159,000 at that time. So we talked about the strategies about how we could purchase, what those different numbers would look like. The after repaired value on the property honestly was 259.9, but they just weren't, they didn't have time to be worried about all that. So we were able to negotiate with them. We purchased the property subject to the existing mortgage. So we actually did buy it for the 159. And then we put $15,000 in for the rehab. So very minimal rehab, but just some real key areas that made a big change. So we changed some of the appearance on the exterior by, you know, just changing out and putting on some bright shutters, had someone paint the front porch railing, did some painting in the rooms just to change the complexion of it, did a little reconfiguring on some of the look of the kitchen, but some simple things. And then we're able to turn around and get it right back on the market. We borrowed that 15000 from one of our private lenders. So somebody that's in our private lender group that, that we work with. So I shouldn't say group because we're not grouping them together. So I don't want anybody to misunderstand. But they're just one of the people that, that lends to us. So we were able to take those funds, immediately get that taken care of. So we didn't have the dollars out of our pocket to do that rehab. So it was to the private lender. And then we worked out what the monthly payment was, obviously, for the property and the the interest that we were paying our private lender. So that's approximately $1,200 a month in total. We were able to rent the property for $1,850. So we had installed a tenant buyer. That was our exit strategy on this property. And so for $1,850 a month, so we were making $650 a month on this property during the time that we had a tenant buyer in there. And then we were able to sell it for the $259.9. So our cash out was about $95.9, obviously, minus some of the holding costs and so forth. But that's right. Well, wow, that's, that's fantastic. So what lessons did you learn from this deal? Okay. So there were a few lessons, not, not anything major, but there, we learn lessons in every one of our properties. One of them is don't pay attention to what the neighbors say when they come over making recommendations. Uh, <laughs> maybe, it may be good for them, but maybe not so good for you. What's an example of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the neighbors happened to be a realtor and she commented that she's extremely familiar what, with what needs to be done on all the properties in the area in order to make them sell quickly. So of course I said, oh, certainly I'll take those on board, you know, and wrote, wrote the notes down. And one of them was a, a tree that was out front that she had decided um, she didn't like. She said, it's dropping limbs on all the cars. It's a hazard. You need to get it removed. But what I did not know was that tree happened to have an eagle's nest at the top of it. So while I had it removed, the rest of the neighbors now were mad at us because of the fact that we took away their only American Eagle out of their neighborhood. <laughs> Didn't make, it, make them all very happy with us. The other thing is when you do write up a contract with somebody, for example, this example, it's a tree removal, make sure you delineate every item in that contract, i.e. not just cut the tree down, but cut it up into sections that are manageable and remove them from the property. While you may assume that they're all in one, they're just gonna say, hey, it's only for cutting the tree down, not for removal. That also didn't include grinding the stumps down. So I've gotten much better at identifying each line item on those little contracts. I bet you have. <laughs> and, a, and a biggie, honestly, was at the outset of the the project. And that was, I think we as real estate investors, as we start our career and start to work through that career, we're thinking about, you know, oh my gosh, I don't know, what should I offer? And we get a little ahead of ourselves worried that they may not accept what we offer. And in this situation it was just a, a really great example that, you know, look, they owed 159. I could have sat down and tried to figure out a whole lot more to offer them. And they were happy with that. That's what they wanted. That's what they needed. They didn't want to keep paying this payment. They wanted to move. They wanted to be done. So that was a huge lesson taking forward. It's just always being mindful that we don't need to think about what they want. We need to think about what we need to ask to find out what they want so that we can get that answer back and then serve them in the way that's best possible for all. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. Any parting comments before we call it a wrap? Okay. Well, Crystal and Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show today. Always a pleasure to have you on, and I'm sure we'll have you back again sometime real soon. 
So again, welcome to everyone that was able to join here on the show. I'm Jay Connor of the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. See you on the next show. Bye for now.